Hey guys, my name is Grim, and I want to welcome you to my guide on choosing a class and race. Uh, I remember several years ago when I started playing ESO, I watched IGN's guide on choosing a class and race, and I remember going away from that experience thinking, man, I know nothing about the classes. Like, this one's more supportive, this one's better at soloing, uh, races correlate to classes, obviously, okay, sure. But I didn't have any flavor for the gameplay. I didn't know what it would be like to actually play one of these classes. And so I left feeling like I had no idea what was going on. And I just chose whatever I thought would be cool anyways. And it made no uh, meaningful impact on how I approached ESO. Now, years later, I wanted to improve upon this formula. And so uh, I am making my own guide on how to choose a race and class. The thing I'm most excited for in this video is that I have gotten players uh, from every class in the game, every subclass, all 10 of them, to contribute top tier gameplay and, and give some words of wisdom on their class. So I'm very excited to show you what top tier gameplay could look like on every single class in ESO. Um, and of course, this is for PvP. I'm a PvP player. This is going to be exclusively PvP footage. Um, but hopefully it will give you a legitimate flavor and insight into what each class can kind of be capable of and play like. And most of all, I hope it gets you excited about every class, and I hope that watching this footage will allow one of these classes to sing to you and make it obvious what your choice should be. So without further ado, we are going to jump into this. First of all, I want to make it clear that I can't tell you which class you should play, and it's important to keep in mind that constant balance changes are going to result in certain classes being flavor of the month. There are a few that are predominantly strong throughout the patches, but in general, I'd say that these metrics are fleeting and you're going to do yourself a disservice if you pick your class and race based on whatever is strongest at the time. I think it's much more meaningful to choose a class whose uh, gameplay style you feel syncs with you because whether it's easier or harder by a few percentage points, it's going to be much more fun to play a class that you enjoy the playstyle of. If you're playing Stamina Nightblade because you think it's the best class ever and everyone's told you it's the top tier solo class, which isn't untrue, it's a very strong class, um, you're going to be disappointed with the gameplay if you don't ever want to roll dodge and you want to be able to stand in a tower with your friends and, and take on 40 people at a time. Nightblades just aren't necessarily built for that. Uh, they don't have a lot of passives that contribute to that. And so really what I'm saying without getting into anything too deeply is pick a class that seems fun to you. What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish in the game? Think about that and choose your class based on whichever one is going to, to drive that dream forward for you. Don't pick the one that is numerically strongest according to some people because even that can change. So another thing to keep in mind is that you're probably going to choose your race based on your class instead of the other way around. So what I'm going to do is go over classes first and then I'll specify which races I think excel in their class roles. Keep in mind that certain races are better at PvP and worse at PvE and vice versa. And this can happen for a number of reasons, but normally it's the type of damage you're doing, which is burst in PvP and sustained damage in PvE, and it's the type of uh, passives that you need to make those successful. Um, I'm going to be focusing on PvP, of course, so I want you to keep that in mind as I recommend races. There are five classes in ESO, and each of these can choose to specialize in either Magicka or Stamina, which kind of creates ten classes. Choosing between magic and Stamina Specialization will influence which race you're going to choose, as well as the way that you approach um, gameplay. Keep in mind that you can respec your attribute points and skill points at any time and change between magic and Stamina, but it does cost crowns to purchase a race change, so you're not going to be able to just race change at any time, uh, and there's no option to change your class whatsoever. So once you've chosen your class, that's all that character will ever be in. You're going to have to start a new character if you want to change classes. So let's begin with the Dragon Knights. Dragon Knights are the archetypal tanks of ESO, not just because they have a variety of tanky passives and abilities, but also because they're able to recover their resources without building for stamina recovery, since stamina recovery is usually negated by blocking, at least at this point in the game. 
The Battle Roar passive allows Dragonites to use their ultimate as a form of recovery in addition to whatever offensive and defensive properties it would have given them. Whenever a Dragonite uses an ultimate, they restore health, stamina, and magicka based on the ability's cost. For this reason, many Dragonites will choose to build their playstyle around their ultimates, often using sets like Bloodspawn and Werewolf Hide, which help provide them with both tankiness and ultimate generation. Magicka Dragonites have solid AoE pressure, which utilizes class abilities like Inhale, Talons, and Dragon Leap. They also have really strong single target pressure and take advantage of powerful crowd control abilities like Fossilize and a spammable whip which does more damage and heals you when you're attacking off-balance opponents. They also have strong passive healing via Burning Embers, Inhale, and their ultimates which all heal them while they're on the offensive. Access to Major Mending and a decently strong burst heal along with the option to block cast provide Magicka DK considerable defensive options when outnumbered. This makes Magicka DK ideal for both small group and large group encounters where their tankiness, AoE pressure, and burst ultimates can turn the tide of a fight. Ideal races for Magicka Dragonite include Dunmer for min-max damage and larger pools of both stamina and Magicka, Argonian for a ridiculous amount of sustain, and Breton for max stats and some cost reduction on Magicka abilities. Stamina DK, unlike Magicka DK, does not have a spammable. There's no Stam Morph of Whip at this point in the game, and so lacking that capability and the crowd control of their Magicka counterparts, Stam DKs generally lean even harder into the Battle Roar passive, building for either maximum ultigen or considerable tankiness to sustain their health in between ultimates. Stam DKs will usually focus their offense around uh, their class poison dot, like Venomous Claw, uh, or weapon abilities such as twin slashes for dual wield, dizzying swing and executioner for two-hander, and puncture bash combos for sword and shield users. Stamina DK's defense benefits greatly from fragmented shield which allows them to have maximum uptime on major mending, while also restoring stamina using the helping hands passive. Heavy armor DK's also benefit from the Traconic power skill line with reflective plate providing heavy armor stamina DK's an alternate way to break snares allowing them to run more healing than any other heavy armor stamina class via Rally in the two-handed skill line. I think ideal races for Stamina Dragonite include Red Guard for damage, max stamina, and an alternate means of recovery, which is super important and synergizes really well with Dragonite, Nord for the increased hardiness, and Orc for some additional mobility and damage. Argonian can also work because it gives you increased health, healing, and of course that crazy recovery potion passive. Templars are the powerhouses of group play. Their strong AoE pressure combined with insane active healing, purges, and strong synergy options make them crucial backbones for most organized guilds. A forward-facing conal spammable with a snare attached to it makes Templars the ideal choice for dragging stealthed opponents into the vulnerable wild, as well as allowing them to flatten entire groups at the same time. As opposed to the burst damage that many other classes prefer, Templar's unique kit of channeled abilities and dots allows Templars to build with a higher reliance on sustained damage, and while their hard CC options are limited, the class snares allow them to take advantage of their sustained pressure, locking fleeing enemies into deadly traps. Magicka Templar is often seen as the game's primary healing class, and while the class does excel in this area thanks to powerful burst heals and defensive passives, they can also pack a considerable punch. Because abilities like puncturing sweeps heal based on damage done, Many Magplars elect to build full damage and rely on their passive healing for the majority of the fight. The ability to use a shield while healing also provides Magplar the arguably greatest recovery potential of any class in the game since they can block and heal at the same time, turning the tables on their opponents even from the very brink of death. Excellent races for Magplar include Argonian, of course, for sustained health and that potion passive, which is a ridiculous amount of sustain. Um, and Breton for Max Magicka and some cost reduction. Stamina Templars are the Berserker class of ESO. For Stamplar, sustain and healing comes from killing opponents and absorbing their power. The more enemies you kill, the stronger you become, so stacking damage is an effective way to play Stamplar. Attacking allows you to increase both your damage output and your critical rating via the Burning Light passives and Biting Jabs, which increases your crit rating when you cast it. Repentance allows you to restore health and stamina using the bodies of dead players around you. 
So as a Stampar, you flatten a group, absorb their health and stamina, purge, buff up, and return to the grind. You rinse and repeat. This aggressive playstyle allows Stamplars to take advantage of damage sets like Ravager, which have a chance to proc on every tick of Biting Jabs. Everything about Stamplar rewards aggression. The more pressure you apply, the more defense your enemies have to employ, and so they're going to be putting out less damage against you. You sustain your health and damage by killing them, and because Major Savagery is linked to your main DPS spammable, you have to attack to receive consistent crit healing. Good races for Stamplar include Orc for the damage and speed, Redguard for better sustain and max stamina, and Nord for increased hardiness. Even Argonian can be effective. Warden is the newest class in ESO, introduced in the Morrowind expansion about a year ago. Since its release, the meta surrounding the class has changed pretty significantly. Warden has had access to almost 20 of the game's major and minor buffs and debuffs, including Major Heroism, which is tied to Shimmering Shield, a powerful defensive ability, Major Fracture and Breach, which is tied to a powerful delayed damage spammable, and Major Resolve and Ward, which can come combined in an ability that also provides minor protection and can give Major Resolve and Ward to allies. The class also has access to several unique buffs, such as Minor Berserk, Minor Endurance and Intellect, Passive Major Mending, uh, Major Expedition, and an unnamed recovery ability that costs nothing to cast and feeds you stamina, making Warden the only class besides Dragonite that can sustain blocking for extended periods. Magicka Warden has had a difficult time finding an identity in open world. Its numerous buffs, AoE attacks, and CCs make it ideal for large group situations. In spite of it being a less popular class, there are people that can seriously make this class work for them, and the playstyle is very unique. Healing Thicket is a powerful healing ultimate, and Shimmering Shield makes Magicka Warden a very efficient group utility character slash ult spammer. The group-oriented gameplay look is somewhat of a mix between Magicka DK and Magicka Templar, where you can snare the enemies, heal and buff your allies, drop permafrost and healing thickets everywhere, and just uh, cause chaos in large groups. Their many innate buffs also make Magicka Warden an ideal catalyst for powerful proc sets. Solo and small group Magicka Wardens can be devastating when using the environment effectively, forcing enemies into tight spaces before drowning them in AoE abilities and it's a very effective way to wipe what would otherwise be a super mobile group. Ideal races for Magicka Warden include Argonian for that sustain and health and healing received, Breton for max Magicka and cost reduction, and High Elf for the elemental damage, max Magicka, and recovery. Stamina Warden is the second big Berserker class in ESO. Exceptional ulti generation paired with Subterranean Assault allows Stam Warden to pulverize multiple enemies in a single burst and then quickly generate enough ultimate to chain those combos back to back. Soothing Spores allows Heavy Armor Wardens to keep up comparable if not outright superior healing to their other Heavy Armor Stamina counterparts. Because Stamdens benefit from getting hit by projectiles via Shimmering Shield, many choose to build so that their speed forces enemies to use ranged attacks. 
Many Stamptons will also lean into this by wearing sets that give them damage bonuses when they take hits, like Fury in 7th Legion. Stamdons are also able to benefit disproportionately from heavy attacks via Green Lotus, which is an ability that grants both increased critical rating through Major Savagery and a burst heal when heavy attacking. Between heavy attacking and bull niche, many stamina wardens don't build recovery any more than using a buff drink, and focus most of their sets, mundises, and even racial bonuses into either offense or defense. This means that ideal races for Stam Warden include Orc for increased speed and damage, Nord for increased hardiness, and Redguard for more sustain and max stamina. Uh, even Khajiit can be used for some stamina and critical rating. Sorcerer is the fastest moving class in ESO. Hurricane and Boundless Storm allow both Magicka and Stamina Sorks to take advantage of speed and resistance buffs, making Sorcerer one of the strongest small group and solo classes available. Sorcerers tend to focus on single target combat, stringing their enemies along until a mistake is made and the Sork is able to use his speed to unleash a massive combination of attacks, which usually culminates in a devastating ultimate to finish it off. Because Sorks lack a spammable, both Magicka and Stamina Sorks usually build around the weapon type that they're using, whether that's a Destro Staff with either Force Pulse or Elemental Reach, Twin Slashes for Dual Wield, Reverb Puncture Bash for Sword and Board, or even Dizzying Swing with a Two-Hander. Magicka Sork is one of the premier small-scale and solo classes in ESO, and that's thanks to its remarkable delayed damage burst combos, high mobility, and range. Access to multiple damage shields makes Sork the best class to utilize shield-based defenses, which are extremely potent in 1v1 and small group situations, and scale off of Max Magicka, which allows Sorcerers to build heavily into Max Magicka since it'll buff both their offense and defensive capabilities. Their shields, however, do not scale well with the number of people attacking them, which is why many Sorks also elect to use their superior speed and access to powerful AoE mines to outmaneuver groups of enemies. The delayed damage of Curse allows Magisorks to time their offensive windows so that multiple attacks hit their opponents at once, causing massive damage, and often killing their enemies in a single combo. Ideal races for Magicasork include High Elf, which has long been the king of Magicasork due to their high damage, max magicka, and recovery. And then Breton also brings some max magicka spell resistance and cost reduction to the table, so that's not a terrible option either.
stamina sorcerers take advantage of enormous dot pressure and speed to hunt down and neutralize individual opponents. Building some resistance and speed via Hurricane allows Stam Sorps enough time to dance through whole crowds of enemies, all while applying pressure and pulling stealth enemies out into the open. Many Stam Sorps will take advantage of the hard CC that either Rune Cage or Reverb offer in order to take down their opponents, allowing their many dots and bleeds to damage their opponents into execute range, at which time they can either finish the kill with an ultimate or steel tornado combo, which right now is undodgeable, and can even pull Nightblades with stealth. Ideal Stamina Sorcerer races include Orc for increased speed and damage, Red Guard for that max stam and stamina sustain, and Argonian for health and resource management. And now on to Nightblades. As the only class with an innate, class-bound access to on-demand invisibility, Nightblades are the premier rogues of ESO. Between Shade Teleportation, Invisibility, Major Evasion, and passive access to Major Resolve and Major Ward via the Shadow Barrier passive, Nightblades are one of the strongest and craftiest defensive classes in the game. On the flip side, a variety of offensive passives, an unblockable CC, strong spammable options for both Magicka and Stamina Morphs, and access to top tier burst and execute options will result in a class that excels heavily in single target damage. Magicka Nightblades take that single target damage, and they build upon that foundation by layering hots and serious resistances. Mage Blades are able to apply a crazy amount of single target pressure by passively healing while attacking. Funnel Health, Siphoning Strikes, Path, and Entropy are all common offensive options which play into that heal over time mentality, all while allowing Mage Play to stay on the offensive. Where classes like Magicka Sork and Stam Warden have these windows of attack and defense, Mage Play creates artificial defense by laying down tremendous single target pressure, overwhelming their opponents until their burst combo is aligned, at which point a simple Soul Tether Assassin's Will Impale combo can quickly finish a fight. Mage Blades excel particularly well in small scale and 1v1 situations where they have the space to create offensive pressure, which doesn't exist as easily in group situations. Ideal races for Mage Blade include Argonian, whose health, healing, and sustain bonuses benefit Mage Blade greatly, and Breton, which brings both cost reduction, max magicka, and increased spell resistance to the table. Stamina Nightblade takes that same single target damage potential of a Mage Blade and funnels it through a Stamina Catalyst. Because Stam Blades don't benefit from the advantage of ranged light and heavy attacks, they focus less on passive defense such as Siphoning and Resistance, and instead build their defense around Speed, Evasion, and Line of Sight, which includes both Cloak and Shade. Heavy Armor Stam Blades focus more on healing while they lay down dots and then finish their assault with either an Incap Strike or a Dawnbreaker whereas medium armor stand blades focus on front loading their entire damage combo into a few instant cast abilities, allowing them to kite until the moment that they're ready to engage their targets with devastating burst. The combination of speed, stealth, roll dodging, and constant passive major resolve and major ward make Nightblade one of the strongest defensive classes for 1vx and small scale groups. Because their defense relies on mobility and stealth, the strength of these mechanics diminishes as you increase in group size making them kind of sub-optimal for medium and large-scale engagements. In my opinion, the best racial option for Stamina Nightblade is Wood Elf, which allows Stamblades to synergize their class and race passives, resulting in amazing recovery and damage. 
Redguard, Orc, and Khajiit are also viable options, but I think Redguard is the best alternate to Wood Elf, especially if you're not using a bow. Um, though you will receive a significant loss in passive recovery, which forces these playstyles to rely a little bit more on heavy and melee attacks, which can disrupt the medium armor playstyle to a certain degree. When it comes to choosing a class and race, I highly encourage picking a class that's going to allow you to have the most fun. Don't pick a class on the sole basis that somebody told you that one class is the most powerful. And I know I said this before, but it's really important because you're going to get to the end of the game uh, and your class is going to be all ready to go and you're going to start PvPing and you're going to realize that it sucks. Not because it's actually bad, but because it's not how you want to play. Make sure that you're looking at these playstyles carefully and evaluating the kind of fights that you want to pull. You don't want to waste a lot of time and end up disappointed because of your class choice and be daydreaming about the class that you want to be playing. Fun doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. Some people have more fun with a character because they like the way that the character looks and feels. Some want to accomplish very particular goals and in very particular situations and group sizes. The beauty of ESO is that so many of these classes have absurd amounts of diversity potential and with enough knowledge you can craft the playstyle that fits you best. Anyways, I want to thank you all for watching my guide to choosing your class and race, and I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. As always, please feel free to ask any questions that you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, I want to give a crazy shout out to everyone that contributed. Um, I'm really grateful and I'm definitely leaving all of their channels in the description and I really hope that you check them out because each of these people are experts in the classes that they play. And, uh, and feel free to go spam them with questions instead of me too, in, in case you're, you're wondering about these playstyles. Anyways, with all that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.